Hi, my name is Dennis Augustsson and I'm a researcher from University West in Sweden. I've been training our partners and their students in media literacy and video production in the Virtuous project. And why have we done that? Well, video production gives the possibility for teachers and students to produce and present knowledge in a new and creative way. By documenting and sharing their experiments, they get a deeper understanding and the possibility to connect to other schools and discuss and share their experiments and results. This is the basic structure for our collaboration. First, the students met in a video conference to get to know each other and to discuss virtue topics. After that, each school produced videos on their own virtue experiments and then published them online for the others to watch. After that, a second video conference was set up, where students discussed their results and processes. Making videos on your science experiments is not mainly a question about technology. You can use your own smartphones and simple editing tools available for free on the internet. But what you have to learn and discuss with your students properly is how to make a good narrative on video what scenes to shoot, what kind of images to use, and how you explain the experiment and the results in a comprehensible way using video. Now this is a skill that takes some time to practice, but it's a very rewarding and creative process. A good advice is to make it a cross-curricular activity using English, fine arts or other subjects that could be part of the filmmaking process. Here are three examples of student films that were made in the project. Moin Moin from Kiel. Our group is testing the effect of salinity in the water on the species. In the following I will explain our steps to get scientific results. First of all we started with building our racks. We needed two of them. As a material for one we took a rope, a few plastic tubes, six plastic discs, cable ties and some tool nuts. Not to forget a name tag. We hang out the racks at different spots. One into the Baltic Sea which is salt water the other one into the Schwentine, which is a small river of clear water in Kiel. For this one we need to thank our teacher Mrs. F. Lemikert, because she hang out the second one for us. From this time on we have to wait at least 8 weeks to get any results. Because of that we are not able to show you some things yet. But we tell you what we expect to achieve. We definitely expect the salinity to have an impact on the growth on the rack. First thing, we think that the flora and fauna on the racks will be slightly different, depending on whether they were in salt or fresh water. This hypothesis is relied on the principle of the osmoregulation referring to fish. Salt overall takes water out of the body, which disturbs the metabolism and its enzymes. As consequences, the fish living in salt water have to assimilate themselves in order to survive. Fish that live in ocean are homoeosmotic, which means that their osmotic value constantly is the same. Also, the water around them has a higher salinity than the fish himself. Because of the saltians, the animal constantly loses water. Trying to balance this, the fish have to drink a lot of water which, in logical manner, is salt water. After drinking, they excrete the contained salt through their gills. Fish living in freshwater have another problem. Their osmotic value is a lot higher than the one of the water, which has also a lower amount of salinity than the fish's body. Water constantly flows through the fish's skin into their body. Therefore, it is hard for them to keep the salt concentration of their bodies on the same level. Because of this, we expect the animals on the discs to be different. Because they have to have specific accommodations in order to survive in areas with different solemnities. Biofouling is how it grows elves and animals on boats hull. Why this is interesting and important is because it folds elves which then slows down the boat. To prevent that elves are growing on the hulls, 
is that different solutions. You can drive your boat up on a vacuum place, have boat lifts and underwater wash. Some days ago we took up a rack that had been in the sea for one year. Here we saw how algaes and other organisms grew. On the upper side of the disc it was 31 barnacle and on the other side it was 46. The underside was covered in 95% of bryozoonas. Species we found was filamentous algaes, gamorus, electra spear violet, bristle worm and uh, pilayella. And we are going to test some different paint to find the one that protects the hulls the best. So we painted two discs on the half of each side and we put one on the top of the rack and one in the bottom. We did the same with two other discs, but with a different biofouling paint. In the middle of the rack, we took rim spray on one half and no color on the other half. Through the microscope, we find out that there were lots of different species. Here are some examples. 
So here you can observe a marine worm. There were plenty of them. differences between the first disc and the last one. What we thought wasn't the right way. We discovered new species and we learned more about our sea. There's a lot of amazing life we can see. If you want to find out more about media literacy and video production, take a look at my website videodidactics.net. There you can find tips and tutorials to improve yours and your students' skills in video production. I've also been part of a collaborative video production on plastic pollution, which is a hot topic. Uh, we use the same basic structure as in the Virtuous project. In the spring 2017, K-12 students from the United States and Sweden engaged in a collaborative video production on plastic pollution. The project was created through a participatory design process with teachers and researchers framing outcomes and learning processes. The project started with local activities on plastic pollution, as well as introductions to video production and media literacy. The students then met in a video conference discussing different marine topography and the issues of plastic pollution. From there they started the production of videos with their international partners as the target audience. Low-end technology was used and most films were made with the students' own smartphones and edited on freeware editing platforms of their own choice. Engaging in real-life issues, the students visited research facilities they interviewed politicians, they explored the shores for evidence of pollution and they engaged in cleaning activities all documented with video. The forms of representation was a mix with mashup techniques, documentary approaches and instructional video clips. 17 videos were produced, shared and discussed by the students. They finally met in Charleston on a joint excursion at the Department of National Resources deepening the relations and their knowledge production. Mm -hmm.